Good morning, everybody. My name is Tom Dedeen. Um, I'm a dairy farmer from Ballynoe in County Cork. And my topic delves into the viability of adding value to milk as a diversification option for Irish dairy farms. Since being awarded my Nuffield Scholarship, um, as Mary said there, myself and my wife Norma, we have started um, a farmhouse cheese enterprise, Borua Farm, processing milk into a range of farmhouse cheeses. My Nuffield study was inspired by a personal desire to explore all the requirements um, necessary to make a success of diversifying our family's dairy farm by adding value to our milk. Uh, my Nuffield Scholarship took me on a global adventure, visiting England, Wales, France, Holland, the USA, Brazil, Mexico, and New Zealand. Uh, it was an opportunity for personal growth and the making of some lifelong friends. As a startup cheese producer, it was also a unique opportunity to visit places like the Cheddar Gorge in the UK and towns like Edam and Gouda in Holland. I have visited farms around the world where they have diversified their sheep, goat, and dairy cow enterprises into producing delicious cheeses ranging from soft, creamy breeze to tangy blue cheeses and hard cheddar cheese. And also ranging in scale from artisan producers right up to small creamery scale. Uh, there are many motivations at work when you decide to do more with your herd's milk. For some, it's a natural progression to complete the dairy product processing cycle on the farm, ensuring the freshest possible and most natural dairy product reaches the consumer. Personally, I also see adding value to the output of the farm as a means of maximizing the return on all our farm's resources, our land, our labor, our skill set, and capital. Conventional expansion of our dairy farm is difficult due to limited land availability. However, I see moving up the value chain and taking ownership of a larger proportion of the value chain as a means to expand my dairy farm business. Agriculture in Ireland is grounded in a unique family farm structure, which defines the characteristic of our countryside and lies at the heart of our rural communities. By contrast, agriculture in USA, Australia, and New Zealand tends not to be deeply rooted in community. Instead, large-scale farming is often based around corporate structures with factory-scale production units going hand-in-hand -hand with rural hollowing out. Trends across Europe show a reduction in farmer numbers is, linked, is matched with a negative impact on the social and economic rural environment. Diversification has an important role to play in maintaining the vibrancy of our rural economy. The transition from commodity dairy farmer to a producer of a differentiated value-add product takes a significant change in strategy. From being a low-cost producer of a commodity product to producing a unique value-add product, that's not, this is not a strategy that will align with the capabilities and resources of every farm family. Even so, it's surprising that just 0.4% of all farms process. This is quite remarkable when we look at our English and Dutch counterparts who have far higher percentages of farmers processing. My travels allowed me to appreciate the cultural reasons for such low diversification rates on Irish farms, where mainstream dairy farmers are sheltered from the markets thanks to our cooperative processing model. Here in Ireland, as farmers, our identities are rooted in conventional farming practices and intergenerational family farms. Farmers want to farm. Having been on a path to specialization for decades, few have a desire to diversify their occupation. However, there has never been a better time for farmers to produce value-add products, as consumers are demanding more wholesome, less processed produce from shorter food chains. There is an increasing demand for regional local foods, which are produced in accordance with sustainable agricultural practices. Bordbia do an amazing job of promoting our green food island. Origin Green and the sustainability credentials we have here in Ireland are the envy of the whole world. And it, it is something that came up time and time again in my travels. Research shows that two-thirds of Irish consumers believe it is important to buy local food. And this is not just an Irish or European phenomenon. Local food sales in the US grew from five to $12 billion between 2008 and 2014 and are predicted to jump to $20 billion by 2019. This outpaces, outpaces the growth of the country's total food and beverage sales. So 
This brings me along to a, a formula for sustained profitable growth I came across in a book called The Kerry Way, which charts the progress of the Kerry Group. So the strategy, or sorry, the formula goes as follows. Strategy multiplied by capability multiplied by capital equals sustained profitable growth. But this formula is just as valid when applied to on-farm value add ventures. If any one of these elements are missing, the result at best is 0% growth. Serious consideration and planning must be given to each element of this formula to ensure the success of the value add venture. For the purpose of this brief presentation, let's examine each of the formula's elements. Firstly, let's look at capability. I believe Irish dairy farmers are very capable and hardworking. They have demonstrated their ability and willingness to change and adopt and expand their businesses when possible. However, the transition from farmer to food producer raises some different challenges. The progression from working often in solitude on the farm to becoming a food producer and dealing directly with retailers and consumers requires a mix of abilities and characteristics. Teamwork from the farm family is essential. Diversification projects cannot be undertaken by a solitary dairy farmer who is preoccupied with the running of the dairy farm. On my travels to the UK, Holland and New Zealand, I met numerous successful farmer diversifiers. A characteristic which really stood out for me was the vital role of entrepreneurship and the ability to exploit opportunities aligned with the capabilities and resources of the team, which often were the farm family and the farm. Other traits, such as management skills, problem-solving ability, and the belief in ability to control events were also evident. These traits can be intrinsic. If not, however, many can be learned, mentored, or indeed recruited. Next, let's take a look at strategy. Firstly, what value-add product can you be really passionate about? Can it be differentiated from commodity products? And is it aligned with your farm's unique selling points and resources? The options, of course, in terms of dairy products are endless. Direct marketing and sales is something that most dairy farmers are very unfamiliar with. However, anyone who has been to a supermarket recently will have seen life-size photographs of farmers used to promote Irish produce. I believe the secret driver to success of a value-add venture is the opportunity to build unparalleled trust with the consumer by using your own distinct personal voice to relay the authenticity of your farm's produce and brand. Your business strategy defines how you will achieve your goals and reach success. While a business plan is essential, before you tackle it, I recommend you use a strategic visualization tool called the Business Model Canvas. Your business model can be best described through nine basic building blocks that show the logic of how a company intends to make money. The nine blocks cover four main areas of your business. Your customers, your offering, infrastructure, and financials. It's a blueprint for strategy that can be implemented through your organization's structures, processes, and systems. As you can see, it's a visual chart which can be printed out on a large surface so your team, or in my case family, can jointly sketch and discuss the business model elements with post-it notes or board markers. It's a hands-on tool that fosters understanding, discussion, creativity and analysis. The final element of the equation, of course, is capital. It is essential before you consider a value-add enterprise that your core business is running efficiently and profitably. The range of regulations relating to food production mean that startup costs involved can be quite significant. Many farmers, particularly small farmers, often have scarce resources to invest in a new enterprise and fear the impact of a new enterprise on the existing business. <coughs> However, substantial grant aid is available. The main agencies offering support are the local enterprise offices, Leader, and Enterprise Ireland. At Borua Farm, we have drawn on a vast array of supports, both financial and educational, since deciding that this route is for us. A bursary from the Department of Ag, feasibility funding from the local enterprise office, innovation funding from Enterprise Ireland, Acorns and Excel entrepreneurship training, focused market training from Borbia, to name a few. 
Farmers are in a very fortunate position to be able to leverage against their assets if needs be. Schemes such as the SPCI SME loans and the discount and standard rates they offer are to be welcomed. However, confirmation of government-backed funding should be taken as collateral. There are, of course, alternatives to raising finance, angel investors, crowdfunding, and if all else fails, you might notice always the three Fs, friends, family, and fools. <laughs> Recommendations. Um, there is a need to build awareness of the benefit of farm diversification. This needs a targeted advertising campaign to promote the concept through positive examples of it at work, examples such as Glenelg Farm, The Little Milk Company, Wicklow Cheese, and others. There is a perception that financial supports available are bureaucratic and cumbersome to access, secure, and draw down. Rightly so in the case of Leader, which is simply not working, with just 0 0.6 of the 2014 to 2020 budget drawn down to date. Chagas, Ireland's Agriculture and Food Development Authority, has earned the trust of farmers and is an ideal conduit to facilitate farmers and their families considering diversification. I suggest rural enterprise development specialists should be created and accessed through the Chagas Advisory Network. They could be a single point of contact for guidance, support in the exploration and development of new diversification ideas. Once a diversification enterprise is established, mentoring in the early years is vital. A discussion group model for ongoing mentoring and support could be very successful. From my own diversification experience, I know only too well the important role that pilot plants and food incubation centres play. We were very fortunate to have Chagas Moor Park on our doorstep. Without it, we simply would never have taken the first steps in our farmhouse cheese venture. Conclusions. Dairy farm diversification can work successfully for some farms. Obviously, it's not a silver bullet. There are some excellent supports already out there, but more resources and focus needs to come from stakeholders. Farmer producers can leverage off Origin Green to tell our fantastic green food island image. Also, Irish food culture is evolving, and customers want to know more about where their food comes from. This is a huge positive for the farms who have full control over all the food chain. Finally, I would like to thank Nuffield Ireland for this great opportunity, and especially FBD Trust for sponsoring me, and the Irish Farmers Journal for publishing my blog post on their website when I was on my travels. I'd like to give a nod of thanks to my mentor, Tim O'Leary. Um, but the biggest thanks of all must go to my wife, Norma, who has been my rock and very supportive all through my Nuffield journey. She took care of our young family and businesses while I was off traveling around the globe. So thank you very much, Norma. Thank you.